Brandon Lee here from Virtualization Now 2. And if you're like me, you live and breathe home lab and enterprise virtualization. You've probably already heard the big news, especially if you follow my blog posts. Proxmox just dropped two brand new beta releases, Proxmox VE Server 9.0 beta and Proxmox Backup Server 4.0 beta. Both are packed with features that could change how we virtualize backup and manage infrastructure from our home labs all the way up to production environments. Let's dive into everything new that we know about, what's exciting, and why you should definitely start testing these in your home lab setups. Let's dive in. So first, let's kick things off with Proxmox VE Server 9.0 Beta. Here's a rapid fire list of new features coming in this release. This release is based on Debian 13 Trixie base operating system with a Linux kernel of 6.14.8, Kimu 10.0.2 plus LXC 6.0.4, ZFS 2.3.3 with RAID-Z expansion, Ceph 19.2.2 Squid, shared LVM snapshot support, which is in tech preview, SDN fabric improvements and network interface pinning, dark theme is enabled by default, cluster FS support is removed in this release, and full switch to Cgroup version 2. Now let's break down some of these major new features. First of all, it's built on Debian 13 with kernel 6.14. Proxbox VE9 beta is now based on the Debian 13 release, and with the Linux kernel upgrade, that's a serious upgrade from the previous Debian 12 and Linux kernel 6.2 in Proxbox 8.x. With this update, you will also get support for newer CPUs, PCIe 5.0, NVMe optimizations, and expanded networking performance. So yes, that underlying base upgrade and uplift is definitely worth it. Also, Cgroup version 2 is now mandatory, which means that older container operating systems like CentOS 7 won't play nicely anymore. Kimu 10 brings faster VM launches, smarter CPU pass-through, and better NUMA awareness. For containers, LXC6 brings tighter resource isolation and full secret version 2 support. This is a great update for hybrid workloads where you're mixing virtual machines as well as containers on the same Proxmox node. Also, storage gets a major boost in this release, and it's probably where I'm the most excited. ZFS now supports RAID-Z expansion without downtime, improved snapshot space estimation and I.O. handling. Ceph 9.2.2 is now installable right from the Proxmox GUI. And Ceph, as we all know, makes hyper-converged, high availability clusters easier to deploy and manage. And all of this is built and tightly integrated with the Proxmox web UI. So we can definitely take advantage of this in the home lab as well as our production environments. Okay, now this one is a big deal, and I'm really excited about it, especially if you're migrating from VMware vSphere. Proxbox 9.0 Beta introduces snapshot support for shared LVM volumes like iSCSI and Fiber Channel. Up until now, this has been a major bummer for using traditional SAN storage with iSCSI LUNs. You couldn't have snapshots on those Proxbox virtual machines on iSCSI. You can change snapshots for rollbacks. You can keep your legacy storage in play, especially if you've been utilizing that with ESXi. Another tech preview feature allows snapshots on file-based storage as well using QCAL2 chaining. So if you're running VMs on a NAS or even a local directory store, you can now get real snapshots without switching to ZFS or LVM. Now, networking also sees some major upgrades in this release. SDN in Proxmox 9.0 has received some really nice enhancements. You can, with SDN Fabric support, as Proxmox is noting it, you can define routed networks and custom topologies across nodes, which is perfect for VLAN-heavy home labs. And you can do something called network interface pinning, that allows you to bind virtual machine NICs to specific host adapters. And yes, dark mode is finally default in Proxmox VE 9.0. No more burning your eyeballs out after midnight home labbing by default anyway. 
Also important, GlusterFS is gone. So if you're still using it in previous versions of Proxmox, now is certainly the time to plan a migration away from Gluster. It is deprecated across many solutions and Proxmox is not alone here. Uh, many solutions are pulling support back and unfortunately feels like an abandoned product. Security and compatibility upgrades is another nice new area of enhancement. C Group V1, of course, is gone. NVIDIA Grid users must upgrade to driver version 570 plus, and non free firmware repo is now on by default for automatic CPU microcode updates. So they're serious about security, but it is going to mean some changes there. The installer plus ESX migration features and functionality has also been enhanced. The installer now supports ZFS RAID Z2-3 and TPM2 encryption. The VMware import tool now supports older ESXi builds. So if you're running a legacy version of VMware vSphere with Proxmox 9, you can migrate those. Restore speeds from Proxmox backup server have also been drastically improved according to the documentation. Now, speaking of backups, let's shift gears to Proxmox Backup Server 4.0 Beta, which is roughly released at the same time as Proxmox VE9. Now, for those that don't know about Proxmox Backup Server, it's a fully featured open source backup solution that is completely free. And so that means you don't have to shell out major cash, even if you are saving the licensing funds on Proxmox VE, you don't have to purchase an enterprise backup solution because Proxmox Backup Server is completely free and it's enterprise ready. Now, as for a rapid fire list of new and exciting features with Proxmox Backup Server 4.0, like Proxmox 9 VE Beta, it's built on Debian 13 and Linux kernel 6.14, ZFS 2.3.3 with live RAID Z expansion, and it has S3 compatible object stored backend as a tech preview, and we're going to get more to that. That's really exciting. Smarter sync jobs for removable drives, better notification system, enhanced GUI, support for long NIC names and multiple failbacks. Expanded language support is also included in this release. Now, for the big news, I think this is going to be huge. It now supports S3 compatible storage, and this is in tech preview. So not only native AWS S3 storage, now PBS can write backups directly to S3 compatible storage. So think AWS Wasabi or MinIO if you are familiar with those solutions. So you get cloud-like retention, cost savings, and your existing backup workflow. Now, just a note, this is still in tech preview, so don't put this in production and back up your production data sets on this just yet. Now, as for RAID Z expansion and removable sync jobs, you can now add disks to ZFS RAID Z pools without downtime. And if you use rotating USB drives, PBS can auto run sync jobs when these are mounted. So this is perfect for air gapped environments or thinking about offsite backup solutions that you may implement with those rotating USB drives. Now, also the GUI and notification system has been improved. The UI, of course, is getting more and more polished, including a better open ID login workflow, new tabs for Tate job notifications. It also introduces fixes for SMTP bugs and backup conflicts, and it's now easier to configure alerts even when running and configuring from the CLI. Now, also interesting, snapshot pruning and garbage collection is now smarter. Uh, it fixes garbage collection issues that have been noted race condition fixes and more robust snapshot pruning, especially to allow you to bypass pruning on protected jobs. And that is definitely of interest in enterprise production environments. Now with all of these new and exciting features with Proxmox VE Server 9.0 Beta, as well as Proxmox Backup Server 4.0 Beta, should you try it? Well, if you're running a home lab, absolutely give these beta releases a try, throw it on a mini PC, both Proxmox VE9 and PBS 4.0 bring powerful new features that I definitely think are worth giving it a test and once over becoming familiar with it before the GA release. Especially things like 
shared snapshots, iSCSI snapshots, STN fabrics, and of course the S3 backups with PBS 4.0. I'm super excited about these releases, especially the shared LVM snapshots, the S3 storage and PBS. I think these are going to be game changers if you're migrating away from something like VMware vSphere or you're looking to scale your backups to cloud-like storage. Now, let me know in the comments, are you going to try out these betas in your home lab or are you potentially waiting for the GA release. I would definitely be interested to know if you're downloading these solutions as we speak. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get notified of new videos once they are posted. And do, once again, check out Home Lab Explorers to join a exciting community of like-minded home labbers who are learning, exploring, and just tinkering with really cool stuff. Also check out the official blog that I run, Virtualization How To, as well as the forums there. I help out there as well. So do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.